Originally with this video I planned on reading through scientific paper upon scientific paper, but I've decided that until my paleontology videos start getting more views there's no point putting in weeks upon weeks of effort or to get not even 200 views on a video. So expect this video to be very short, brief and straight to the point in comparison to some of my more recent ones. Tyrannosaurus was named and described in 1905 and for this fight I'll be using the specimen known as Stan or BHI3033 who weighs 7.7 .7 metric tons according to a GDI estimate I found on DeviantArt which I'll show up on screen. According to calculations I made using Laramendi's formula for estimating theropod speed, Stan can reach an approximate speed of 31.6 kilometers an hour and according to Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs a two 2012 study found he had a maximum bite force of 57,150 newtons or 12,800 psi, though this is the maximum. The estimates actually ranged from 35,640 to 57,150 or 8,000 to 12,800 psi, with the middle ground listed as being 44,940 newtons or 10,100 psi. The scary part about this isn't just how strong the bite force is, but the fact it could be even stronger. According to theropods and other dinosaur forms, the bite force was unilateral. Unilateral means that the bite is taken from one side of the jaw, typically towards the back. If the bite force was bilateral, where it's taken from both sides of the jaw, it could be 30 to 100% stronger. Another, more recent 2022 study also found T-Rex had a bite force of 24,400 newtons towards the front and 48,500 newtons towards the back, though this was bilaterally, which is about 5,500 to 10,900 psi respectively. Even though it's not as impressive as the 2012 study, it's still very impressive considering that's nearly double what Carcrodontosaurus achieved in the study. Tyrannosaurus also has some of the best binocular vision out there, with a 2005 study estimating it as having binocular vision of roughly 55 degrees in comparison to Carcrodontosaurus, who in the same study was found to have around 20 to 25 degrees. The reason I'm comparing it to Carcrodontosaurus here is because said studies didn't use Giganonosaurus, though this shouldn't matter too much due to them being closely related. Tyrannosaurus also has a pretty good REQ and BEQ, or Reptile Encephalization Quotient and Bird Encephalization Quotient, which are measurements of intelligence in reptiles and birds. Based on three specimens listed in theropods and other dinosaur forms, Tyrannosaurus had an REQ of 1.44 and a BEQ of 0.10633 recurring when averaged out among these three. As a comparison, Giganosaurus was found to have a REQ of 0.98 and a BEQ of 0.07. What this means is that Tyrannosaurus was relatively smart, especially compared to its opponent in this fight. Couple this with the high degree of binocular vision and powerful jaws, Tyrannosaurus would know how to quickly and easily end the fight. The king of tyrant lizards also hunted some of the most dangerous herbivores to ever evolve. The horned dinosaur Triceratops, the armoured Ankylosaurus, the massive Hadrosaur Edmontosaurus, and other dangerous animals such as the titanosaurian sauropod Alamosaurus. As a result, Tyrannosaurus was designed as this massive brawler dealing massive amounts of damage, possibly ending the fight with one or two good bites in the right area on some of these animals. Giganotosaurus was described in 1995 and it is represented in this fight by the holotype specimen, which weighs 7 metric tons according to theropods and other dinosaur forms, making it comparable to Stan in this fight. According to theropods and other dinosaur forms, Laramendi's formula for estimating theropod speed put it at an approximate speed of 33.3 km an hour, making it only marginally faster than Stan in this fight. A 2005 study also, according to theropods and other dinosaur forms, found that Giganosaurus had a unilateral bite force of roughly 13,250 newtons, or about 2,980 psi. If it was bilateral, we're looking at somewhere between 17 1200 and 26,500 newtons, or about 3,870 to nearly 6,000 psi, which is comparable to that of Carcrodontosaurus in that 2022 study I mentioned earlier. 
In comparison to Tyrannosaurus in terms of intelligence, I've already stated the REQ and BEQ, but if you forgot, it was 0.98 REQ and 0.07 BEQ. This meant that when compared to the specimens of Tyrannosaurus they listed in the book, Giganosaurus wasn't as smart, so you can safely assume Stan has the advantage when it comes to intelligence. When it comes to its environment, most people tend to think it lived with Argentinosaurus. Even theropods and other dinosaur forms says this. However, that was actually its cousin Mapusaurus, but we can assume it lived in a similar ecosystem where it would have hunted primarily sauropods, using its serrated teeth to slice large chunks of flesh off and cause them to bleed out. However, the same weapon that makes some people I've seen online give Giganosaurus the point for weaponry was also the main downfall of large Carcrodontosaurids. According to research I did for my Carcrodontosauridae vs Tyrannosauridae video, when Ceratopsians and Ankylosaurs started to evolve, large Carcrodontosaurids found themselves unable to deal with these new animals, and as large Carcrodontosaurids died off, Tyrannosaurids slowly filled in their niches in North America and Asia. So what you're looking at in this fight is the old ways of hunting versus the new, and as we'll see, sometimes the new ways are just better. One thing that's often said about this fight is that due to Tyrannosaurus being big and bulky, Giganosaurus would have had the speed and agility advantage. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is when you do a little thing called scrolling past Wikipedia, since I came across a 2017 study that found that Tyrannosaurids were consistently more agile when turning than Allosauroids, meaning that Tyrannosaurid Tyrannosaurus would actually be more maneuverable than Allosauroid Giganontosaurus. The study also found Tyrannosaurids were comparable in agility to animals half their mass and twice as agile as animals of similar mass. This means that, let's say Giganosaurus were to try ambushing Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurus could easily turn to respond, and due to the extra muscle, would most likely be able to overpower and subdue Giga. As said earlier, due to having sharp teeth, I've seen people like the YouTuber Creature Challenge give the weapon advantage to Giganotosaurus. I think with this, most people think it's like a video game, where you get the choice between doing decent damage with each hit, but for a certain amount of time after that hit, the enemy is still taking damage over time, or you could just deal a lot of damage all in one big hit. The problem here is that video games aren't real life. If Tyrannosaurus gets a bite in, let's say attempting to go for one of Giga's femurs, but falls short for whatever reason and just bites a chunk of flesh out, it doesn't decrease the size of Giganosaurus's health bar and that's it. Instead, what happens is that Giga is now limping due to having a large chunk of muscle now removed from one of its legs, and now it's bleeding non-stop. So in actuality, both have damage over time, with Tyrannosaurus edging out Giganosaurus in terms of weaponry due to it having a stronger bite force. As you may have guessed, I'm definitely favouring Tyrannosaurus in this fight. It has a stronger bite force, was larger, has better binocular vision, could turn faster, and lived with much more dangerous animals. Tyrannosaurus had roughly 30 million years of evolution over Giganosaurus, so comparing these two is like comparing a M1 Grand to an AK-74. Sure, the Ping Ping Machine of Freedom and Liberty might be an amazing rifle, and was probably one of the main reasons why as soon as the US entered World War II, the Axis powers were doomed, but I'm I'm pretty sure you'd be better off with something that can either be auto or semi-auto at your choosing, has one hell of a punch, and has a 25 round magazine in comparison to the 8 round clips of the Grand. Speaking of which, this kind of reminds me of when I watched Brandon Herrera's video on the VZ-58, which is a Czechoslovakian rifle often hailed as better than the AK-47. Though as he said, there's a reason why no one besides Czechoslovakia themselves used it. It can't take AK mags despite using the same cartridge, it's harder to control due to being lighter and having a higher fire rate, has a shorter barrel meaning you're not getting the same powder burn, and that's on top of many other things he covered in the video. Another thing is the muzzle brake. So this right here is just a muzzle nut that is threaded 14 by one right hand. AK variants are typically threaded in 14 by one left hand. It's the same thread pitch. They just reversed it for no f***ing reason. This means while being the same size threads, none of the AKM will thread onto it. I actually like the, the shape of the, the bayonet for this gun. It actually looks pretty cool. One thing I don't like about it is how it attaches. See the AK and just about every other gun ever, you put the bayonet on from the front and it locks from the front. The VZ-58 locks from the rear, meaning it is detachable 
from the same direction that you're putting force on it when you're stabbing anything solid. F***ing engineers, I don't know. But the good news is it is more than capable of doing this. I would tell Czechoslovakia to get their shit together, but well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, apply that to saying Huguenot source is better than T-Rex. As I just said a few seconds ago, T-Rex was larger, had a better bite force, it was more agile, could do more damage, it was just as fast, and so much more. Though, to end this on a happy note for any Giganosaurus fans out there still watching this, I do plan to cover Giganosaurus in its own video at some point, since I want to cover every single large carnivorous dinosaur. Anyway, I'm gonna head off now and play Ark Survival Evolved or something. Goodbye, and thanks for 1,000 subscribers. Who dares to challenge me?